ahead and um, get started. Um, again, for everybody that's on, if you could please make sure that you're muted on your end so we can minimize background noise. Um, also, we will be recording this presentation, so anybody that is not able to make it, or if you want to go back and re-listen later, you will have the ability to do that. So, um, it will be recorded. Okay, so thank you everybody that has joined. We have David Hercules with us tonight. He is going to do a presentation on leadership. Um, I know you guys um, read the bio that I posted on the Facebook page, um, so you were able to learn a little bit about him. Um, but otherwise, Dave, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Okay, thanks, Jessica. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Y'all? Okay. Good. Well, I appreciate uh, this opportunity, and um, I'm going to just run through quickly uh, a bunch of points that I've kind of accumulated over the years. Um, a lot of it from, it really, there's nothing really original. It's stuff that I've learned from other leaders that I've met in business. It's stuff that I've read uh, in self-improvement books, leadership books, uh, but I've applied to my life and to my business. And I, so I know that these, that these are principles that, that make a difference, that really, um, that really work. And um, I'm going to go through, uh, through these points. I will provide a copy of my bullet points to Jessica and she can email them out to you. So if you want to jot a few notes of, of additional things, go for it. Otherwise you can all have a copy of, of this. Um, after I'm done, I'll send it to her. And um, the one other uh, thing I want to mention is, um, if you have questions, I'll take questions at the end. Uh, so if you do have questions, you can either um, type them in the, uh, in the chat area, I guess. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but we'll figure it out. Or you can wait till the end and ask them uh, verbally, okay? So first of all, leadership. Um, the, uh, the first thing, uh, if I can make sure this works, okay. Accept 100% responsibility for where you are. That's the number one, the number one thing that we that we need to do. Um, if you don't, if you don't have an, an attitude of you know that you're responsible, then how can you have an attitude that you're going to be able to improve whatever situation, uh, your business, relationships, um, whatever it might want to be that you're that you're trying to to grow in. Um, kind of the attitude of the buck stops with you and especially if you perceive that it's not your fault. That's when it's most important to accept that responsibility um, and, and not have the attitude of, of trying to blame others. We live in a society where everybody wants to blame someone else for whatever's happening or not happening in their life, in their business, in their relationship, what have you. Having that attitude that you're taking 100% responsibility for where you are gives you the power it empowers you to grow and move yourself to the next level. And, but without that first step, you never can move to the next step. Um, second thing, especially in the, a business uh, like the one that you guys are involved in, being coachable to your leaders, um, not only is that important for your own growth, but it sets the example for everyone on your team. Your team's not going to be coachable to you and the things that you're teaching if you're not coachable to your leader. Because uh, believe me, the people on your team are watching, they're paying attention to what you're doing and uh, how well you are paying attention to your coaches and leaders. So be the most coachable and your, uh, your people in, in, that are part of your business are going to be coachable to you. And that leads to more success for everybody. Being eager to grow and learn. Um, this is uh, absolutely huge. And when I really learned and got a hold of this concept that uh, you know, we are always in the process of growing and becoming a better version of ourselves. Uh, it was, it was huge, hugely eye-opening and awakening to me. There is no shortage of great resources out there, um, whether it be books, whether it be podcasts, whether it be, uh, you know, TED Talks, whatever. There's so many avenues to learn and grow 
and become better at what you want to become better at. Uh, it's, it almost seems foolish not to take advantage of, of all of the, all of the resources that there are out there. The person that you are now is what got you to where you are today. So how can we expect to, to get to another level, to have another level of, accept, of success if we're not willing to grow who we are? It just makes sense when you think about it. And at the end, I'm going to give you a list of just a few of the books that are some of my favorites that I read that really made a difference uh, as I was and still continue to um, try to grow and learn and get better. Next thing, don't be afraid of making mistakes. At some point, you got to dive in. Now, that doesn't mean that you dive in recklessly to whatever it is that you're endeavoring to do. You want to prepare. You want to learn. You want to set yourself up for as much success as possible. But ultimately, you got to jump in and make the mistakes that you need to make to grow and learn. I, I tell my kids this all the time because they get afraid of trying something because they don't want to mess it up. And my point to them is, is you need to mess it up messing things up is how you learn and grow. You're never going to get good at something until you screw it up. And, uh, you know, when you, when you try something new for the first time, if you do it perfectly the first time, what really have you learned? You've learned nothing. It's only when we mess up and we go, oh, man, that didn't work. What should I do differently? Now you've engaged your problem-solving skills. You've learned a way to not do it. <laughs> And hopefully it gets you thinking about a way to be more successful. But until you try, until you dive in and go for it, you're not going to learn uh, how to get better. Be decisive. We live in a very wishy-washy world, especially those of you that might be in a corporate environment. People are afraid to stick their neck out. Everyone's afraid of taking a chance. You know, if you look at, uh, and, and I've studied a I, a lot of success success stories. I love reading biographies of successful people. I would, I would encourage you to do that as well because you really see that as a common theme that they're willing to stick their neck out. They're willing to call a shot and follow through. And you know what? Sometimes it pans out the way you plan and sometimes it doesn't. But that's what leadership is. Leadership is being decisive. You get input from other people if you, if you feel that's necessary. You, you learn from uh, maybe other people's mistakes. You, you get advice. But at the end of the day, someone's got to call the shot. Someone's got to decide, okay, group, we're heading down this trail. Y'all can sit in this clearing and argue about it, but I'm going this way. You just got to take the step and move. You got to stick your neck out and be the one who's going to set the pace, who's going to not be afraid to move forward. And then you live with the results. If it's a bomb, then it's a bomb. If it works out well, great. Give the credit to, to, to other people if possible, you know. But call the shot, move forward, be the leader. Someone's got to do it, right? And that goes along with the next one, which is making bold decisions, setting a big vision, okay? Um, people might laugh at you if you say, you know what, this is what I'm going to accomplish. I'm going to grow my business to this level. And, you know, people might think you're nuts. They might roll their eyes. Well, you know, I have kind of a, a philosophy. If, if, uh, if my family doesn't think I'm crazy, then I'm not thinking big enough. And that's kind of how I've always approached things. And believe me, my family often thinks I'm pretty crazy. Um, but if people don't think you're nuts, you're probably not thinking big enough, okay? You set the bar high. Go for a big vision. Make bold decisions. And you know what? Even if you only hit halfway there, if you've set a big enough vision, halfway there can be pretty darn successful, right? Go for the brass ring, go for a big picture. And you know, the, a funny thing happens is that people are attracted to someone who sets a big vision and a big goal, especially if you set that big vision and that big goal and you articulate it with confidence. People, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, but people will, might think you're crazy, but they'll follow you. They'll come along just to, if nothing else, watch you blow up, you know? And you sit, go on the street and light yourself on fire. People will gather around just to watch you burn, right? So make those bold decisions. Don't be afraid to step out there. Um, win, right? And then you can talk about winning forever. That becomes your legacy, right? Be confident and sure with your people. Humble and willing to learn. 
with your peers and your leaders, okay? The people that have signed on to follow you, your team, your team that you've brought on into your business, or even your family or, or whoever it is that you are being a leader to, okay? They need to see confidence. They need to see that you're sure about the direction you're going and that you're sure about the path that you have them on as well. But when you get around people that are more your peers or your leadership, be humble and willing to learn and take the best bits and pieces of what they're doing so that you can implement it, go back and show that confidence. If you're, if you're adjusting your direction or you're implementing new things or whatever that you've, that you've learned, you know, do it with confidence, do it with a sense of surety and people will follow. Okay. Be a leader in all aspects of your life. This isn't just for your business. And I know all of you are involved um, in this business, which involves recruiting and being a leader. But, you know, that, that attitude, these, added, these, uh, these principles and the attitude of being a leader has to permeate everything that you do. You can't just be a leader in your business and then forget all this stuff in your home life or forget all this stuff uh, maybe in your other job or what have you. These are things that needs to, it needs to become more about who you are in every aspect of your life. Okay, with your children, with uh, maybe your church groups that you're involved with, or other outside groups, that type of thing. Even your kids' sports teams. Okay, these are universal, no matter what the setting. And um, uh, remember, when it comes to your kids, uh, your kids are watching that example. In fact, on my written thing here, I changed it to what example you're setting for your kids. On the PowerPoint, it says others, but I, w I had ch your, your kids in mind, you know. Um, your children want to see that kind of leadership and that decisiveness as well. And that's going to teach them how to behave when they're adults. This is a big one. Um, we are in, and especially today, <laughs> um, there's a lot, half the country is complaining today. Um, and look, you know, there's, there's no shortage of whiners and complainers out there. The fact is, is that, you know, we, there's certain things that we can change and certain things that we cannot do anything about. Okay. Followers, followers, non-leaders, they like to complain and whine about what's wrong with whatever situation or this or that. Accept what you can change. Okay. Work to change the things that you can change and that you do have some control over and then move on complaining really doesn't get anyone anywhere, right? And uh, again, remember your kids are watching. So if they see you whining and complaining, guess what your kids are gonna do? They're gonna whine and complain also. That's not, that's not any fun. Be the change that you wanna see in other people. Um, ultimately, and any of you that have been married for any length of time, you know you can't change your spouse, right? You really can't change anyone. You can only change yourself. Be the growth that you want to see in others. Be the growth you want to see in, in your team. Okay? Because they're watching. If they see you focused on change and growth, they're going to realize, hey, that's the example. Maybe there's things about myself I need to change and grow in. Okay? You can't change other people. You can change yourself. Control what you can control. Don't try to control other people. Focus on growing and getting better, a little bit better every day, a little bit better every day, and people will start to notice. As you're on the way up, it's important that you, um, that you always look like you know what you're doing and where you're going. Now, some people might say, does this mean fake it till you make it? No, it doesn't mean fake it till you make it. What this means is that it's, it's more of a level of confidence, and that goes back to setting making bold decisions and setting a big vision. Okay. You may not be exactly sure what's down this path, but if you're going to go down that path, go down that path with gusto. Look like you know what you're doing, you know where you're going. And people are waiting for that example. They're waiting for that leadership. They're watching. Find out what is most important to your success and master it. How do you do that? Well, in your business, talk to the people that are most successful in your business. Talk to your upline leaders. 
find the people that are doing well in whatever endeavor it is that you want to do well in, okay, and learn what are the what are the one, two, or three top things that were keys to their success. I'm talking about, you know, activities, you know, is it a certain recruiting techniques or is it um, the way they communicate with their team or what have you? Find out what those things are and master it. Find, find the way to get excellent at the most important items to your success. And that's in whatever, whatever it is that you're endeavoring to accomplish, okay? Um, people skills. I was, I was severely deficient in people skills um, when I first got into to direct selling and, and working with people on a daily basis. I had to, I had to learn this, and and some of the reading material at the end are are the ways that I, that I learned this. You want to develop if you're in a people business, and I know that that's ultimately. I mean, I know you guys are in a fitness business, but really you're in a people business. It's about people. Developing the ability to get along with anybody, no matter how, let's just say, how offensive or how unlikable someone may be. Practice your skills on those people. Getting along with the most unlikable around you. If you can master getting along with the difficult ones, then you, it's dealing with the, the great people becomes that much easier right? Make it a challenge. We all have difficult people in our lives that we have to deal with, right? Maybe at your job, maybe on your team, maybe living in your house with you, whatever. Um, if you can master getting along with anyone, okay, that will uh, have a, a dramatic effect. I, I try to teach my, my kids this. Um, people skills are something I really wish they taught in college, but I don't think but at least I never had the opportunity to, to, to learn these in school. But I can guarantee you, people skills have more to do with my success today and this, any success I've had over the last 20 years. Uh, people skills have more to do with it than any other factor, okay? Um, and there's a lot of great resources. And that's really uh, being a likable person yourself and learning how to communicate effectively, right? Which means communicating concise concisely and being decisive. Um, and again, the, a lot of the reading materials that I have at the end are gonna um, be great resources for that sort of thing. Okay, when you're falling short, don't beat yourself up. Guess what, every day you're gonna fail something, right? You're gonna fall off the boat a little bit. Um, you're gonna miss your workout or you're gonna you know, forget to communicate with your team or you know, you're gonna, you're going to fall short. Don't beat yourself up about it. You know, you're going to have a bad month. Okay. Learn from your mistakes, tee it back up and get after it harder next time. You know, dwelling on past failures is not going to accomplish anything. Now, if there are past mistakes that you can learn from, it does make sense to evaluate what went wrong, what you should have done better, and then resolve to do it better next time and move forward and forget about it right? Beating yourself up about falling short is only going to make the next month that much worse, okay? Get back on your horse. Keep moving. Have a positive attitude and offer an encouraging word to everyone you cross paths with. And this goes for not just people that you stand to gain something from, maybe in your team, but also your upline leadership, also your sideline peers in your business, also your friends and family and coworkers and even strangers that you see, having that positive attitude and an encouraging word and a smile. Sometimes it's as simple as offering a smile. It's amazing, you know, I, I'm in and out of QT like a lot, you know, it's like my favorite place. So I'll be, uh, sometimes I'm there three times a day. And um, it's amazing how many people just seem so glum, you know, they're just down and kind of just hurry in, hurry out. and and they don't really have any sort of brightness or, 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 or positiveness in their face. And then you see someone who's got a smile and how they really stand out or they speak with, a, with an upbeat tone in their voice and they kind of like stand out because it's not how most people are every day. So 
we need to be those beacons of light out there and have that positive attitude and that encouraging word because that rubs off, okay, even when you're, uh, you know, communicating with someone the next day. I mean, it's more of an internal attitude that comes out of you even when you're not trying. As a leader, ultimately, it's your job to take people people where they can't or won't take themselves. Everyone is looking for a leader. People want a strong, decisive, committed leader, right? Someone that they can that they can follow, that they can they can come along with. It's it's your job to, to become that person. Okay? And I would add one thing that I don't have on the bullet points. I read this in a book, so I'm stealing it. True joy, true joy can only come from gratitude. And if you think about it for a minute, you'll realize, you know, that's absolutely true. The true joy has to come from gratitude. When you're thankful for what you have, you're going to automatically be joyful because you're focusing on the positive aspects of your life, right? Because that's, not, you know, when you're thankful, you're thinking about the positive as aspects of your life. True joy comes from gratitude. So have that attitude of gratitude, uh, and that will also manifest itself in the way uh, people see you and in the way that, uh, that you interact with everyone on a daily basis. So finally, this is um, a small list. I mean, there's dozens and dozens of books, but just off the top of my head when I was putting this together, I, I pulled some of the ones that really come to mind as uh, as books that made a big difference um, uh, in terms of reading material. Always be focused on improvement. Always have a book or a podcast or an audio or some something that you're feeding your mind and feeding your uh, feeding yourself, you know, that's a positive that's going to help you keep these things in mind and keep your, your priorities kind of where they need to be in terms of your own personal growth. So anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of what I have. And like I said, I'll send this, um, I'll send this list to Jessica and she can, uh, get it out to you guys. Uh, so at least you have the bullet points. And I'd like to open it up. If there are any questions, uh, from anyone, I'm not exactly sure how to do the, the, uh, written whatever chat thing but maybe jessica knows how are there any questions if anybody has any questions you can go ahead and just unmute and and ask your question verbally i think that'll be easier Well, if there's no questions, then um, I guess that'll do it. I, um, I wish you guys all the best success with your endeavors. I know that uh, Jessica's excited about uh, the business that she's building and the teammates she's surrounding herself with. She speaks highly in, of, uh, of all you guys. So I'm honored to be able to uh, get on here and share a few thoughts with you. So thank you guys. Thank you so much, Dave, for coming on here tonight. and. Um... It's really interesting to me that you brought up how important personal development is and, and the books that you've read. Um, Dave didn't know this, but I mean, that's one of our core foundations. We, we strive to do at least 10 minutes of personal development every day. So the fact that you totally hit on that and how important that has been in your success without you even knowing that that's part of our foundation, I think is just really awesome and speaks volumes to the importance of doing that. So. Um, Thank you so much, and uh, like Dave said, when he sends me over his bullet points, I will send it to the rest of you. So thank you all for joining, and thanks again, Dave. It was really great having you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.